So I want to say welcome to evening yoga and prayer as we enter the light of Epiphany. And I'm really glad to join with you tonight, especially tonight, in worship practice and to center ourselves in moving prayer. You'll notice, as I've mentioned, that I'm sitting in a different location this evening. We've been asked to move from St. Thomas Church to a safer location, location until after the inauguration. So tonight we come together to practice in our homes, praying for peace in our country and a peaceful transfer of power on Wednesday. Our theme tonight is the life and work of the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. To that end, our poem tonight is a quiet meditation by the poet Gwendolyn Brooks called simply Martin Luther King Jr. We must remember this week that King spoke about the importance of nonviolence. When we are truly centered and calm within ourselves and our knowledge of the divine, we can begin the essential work of lifting up the invisible suffering of our country. Our yoga sequence is a grounding, heart-opening practice. Our wisdom literature this evening is Matthew 25, 35 to 40. And it is a parable that asks us to pay attention and act not for ourselves alone, but for others who are hungry, homeless, or locked in prisons. Just a few notes to those of you who are new. This is, a six, this is the second of a six week class through the end of Epiphany and into Lent. We'll have a short break on, Jan, on Friday, January 29th. Wanna invite you to join the Diocese of Washington and our own Bishop on an online discussion about the history of race in our city and in our country. And it's free and it's very easy to sign up for. Um, I sent you all out a link to a new web page I put up that has information on our sessions here and has, uh, I've posted the poems there and posted more information on the poet and on the readings. You can also get a link there to the um, race and reckoning um, the Race and Reckoning talk on, Jan on January 29th there too. And I will post that link. Yeah, I'm posting that link in the chat too. If you wanna go look up the talk or you want to go, uh, I'll be posting the, the uh, Martin Luther King readings there later, later on as well. So you can go there and get those. During yoga and prayer epiphany, we explore ancient wisdom writings and contemporary poetry that resonate in today's world. Our yoga sequences attempt to deepen those readings and to uh, deepen our experience of the theme of the week. One last thing to say is that all bodies are welcome here. So whether you have a long-term chronic injury or sense of weakness or whether you're just suffering this week from uh, some pain somewhere, do not worry. Move in the way that your body calls to you and in a way that your body, um, in a way that you uh, feel comfortable and welcome in the movements. Feel free to simply sit in um, as we are now or in child's pose if you don't feel like moving at all. Alternatively, you can be very active. And, and bounce around as much as you like. Our format is based loosely on the Episcopal um, uh, Compline service. The, and um, I'm gonna be leading and then in the background, you'll hear Tom leading some of the prayers. You'll be muted most of the time, except when we get to prayers of intercession, in which case I ask you to bring out your candles, light your candles and say a prayer for someone whom you have lost, someone who needs a prayer, or simply for our city or our country. So please, we begin. Peace on each one who comes in need. Peace on each one who comes in joy. 
Peace on each one who offers prayers. Peace on each one who offers song. Peace of the maker, peace of the son. Peace of the spirit, the triune one. O holy one, you have taught us to call, the, as you have taught us to call the evening, the morning and the noonday one day and have made the sun to know it's going down, dispel the darkness of our hearts. That, we, that by your brightness, we may know you to be the true God and eternal light, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. And now we come to a part of the service where lungs on your part are called for. We will take in three breaths. And after the final, for the final fourth breath, we will exhale in an ohm together. So inhaling once and exhale, inhaling twice, exhale, inhaling a third time, exhale, release, inhaling a fourth time, Oh. Now I ask you to close your eyes, find a relaxed, comfortable position, seated on the floor or on a cushion, keeping your back upright, but not too tight, allowing your hands to rest gently on your thighs. Feel your body settle into your lap. Your, feel your body settle into your mat. Feel your shoulder blades draw down your back as if your back were hanging off of your shoulders. Allow your jaw to soften, your tongue to relax, and then begin to slow down your breath. Taking a deep breath in and becoming very aware of the breath as you let it go. And another breath in. And exhale, relax, let the air out. And then bring yourself fully into the present moment by becoming aware of the sensations of your physical body and staying focused on the movement of your breath. And now focus on your right foot. And imagine that your right foot is made of golden light. You can visualize it or simply think to yourself, my right foot has become golden light. And now focus on your left foot and imagine golden light filling each part of the foot, the toes, the sole, the arch. You may, use your, you may use your breath as well, breathing into each part of the body as you feel it fill with light. Be aware now of the right ankle and feel it filling with light. Now the left ankle, the right calf bone, muscle and skin, the left calf, the right thigh and then the left. Bring your awareness up into your pelvis, your hips, your buttocks. Feel them filled with the same golden light as if you were touching them with your breath. Let your awareness continue to rise into your lower abdomen, bringing light into the entire area. Seeing golden light filling the flesh, filling the abdomen. And think to yourself, my abdomen has become light. Let the light enter your lower spine. And again, you say to yourself, my spine is made of golden light. 
and imagine the light in your upper abdomen and mid back in your chest and rib cage. Feel your heart and lungs expand with the light and let it fill your back ribs and your upper spine and feel it in your right arm from the upper arm all the way down to your fingertips. And now feel it in your left arm and let the light infuse your neck. And now let the light fill your skull, your forehead, your eyebrows and eyes, your nose, your cheeks. Your mouth has turned to light from your tongue and teeth. Feel your brain completely illuminated by the golden light. And then think to yourself, my entire body is light. Light fills every particle of blood, every cell, every membrane and organ. I am light. And as you inhale, feel that you're breathing in particles of light. And as you exhale, let the light flow out into the world. And now take a few breaths to rest in this body of light. And as you rest in this body of light, choose an intention for yourself for this evening and for this coming week. Who are you? Allow the intention to float into your mind without effort and breathe in your intention. Feel it settle in your heart. Say it to yourself in the present tense as a noun, identifying yourself. I am truth, perhaps. I am freedom. I am nonviolence. I am justice. Or whoever it is that you are, who it is that you embody, what it is, just for this evening or perhaps for this week. And then exhale all the air in your lungs. And as you exhale, breathe out any doubts or anxieties about that intention and place them outside the door of the building where you are waiting for you to pick them up later. They will be there, but for now, leave them away from you. Close the door and come back into the room. And feel God's presence wash over you. Feel a sense of peace and grace. And then offer yourself some appreciation for doing this practice today. And then take your hands rub them together, place them over your eyes, open your eyes, and take your hands away, greeting all the people who are sharing this practice with you and thanking them for being here with you this evening. And now we come to God with words of praise all around us in the example of others. In the unfurling of nature, we see the beauty of the divine. Light of the world in grace and beauty, mirror of God's eternal face, transparent flame of love's free duty, you bring salvation to our race. Now, as we see the lights of evening, we raise our voice in hymns of praise. Worthy are you of endless blessing, son of our night, lamp of our days.
Now we come to our moving prayer. I want to begin first simply in seated pose. We're going to sit here and feel ourselves grounded on the floor or on our mats. And then turn to the left, taking your right hand right in front of you, the fingers down into the floor, your left hand in the same way, lifting up through your spine and turning your heart, turning your chest, looking to the left. Coming back and then taking that same twist over to the right. Coming back, taking your arms up, and bending forward, leaning forward all the way, taking your head down as far as it will go. If it'll touch the floor, reaching your arms out. And then inhale back up, take your arms up again. Exhale, bring your hands to your heart and we will come into child's pose now, more fully embodying that letting go, that bowing down. So child's pose, your knees are apart. Your knees are apart, your toes are touching at the back, your head is down. And take your arms all the way to the front of you, stretching them out as far as they'll go. And then take them over to the right, stretching all the way to the right. And then back to center, reaching them forward. If your chest comes down onto the floor, that would be terrific. And then taking them over to the left, all the way to the left. And then we come back up in a table pose, taking our hands, our wrists, directly beneath our shoulders, slight bend to the um, um, to our arms. And then we're going to take the right hand and take it all the way up to the right and bring it down keeping a strong core, pulling your belly in. Take it all the right up, all the way up and bring it down. Inhale up, all the way up, gazing up towards your right hand. Exhale, bring it under, threading the needle. Right hand comes all the way down. And then you can take your left foot and take it out all the way to meet your right hand. So your right hand and your left foot are touching. Your left long is straight and long. And then take your left arm up and all the way over. You might take it around your right thigh, pulling your belly in. A gentle twist as your gaze is up to the ceiling. And then inhale, come back. And we'll take the left hand up and back. Left hand up and back. Inhale, arm up. Exhale, hand comes under your body. Right foot comes to meet the left hand. Inhale, your right arm up. Take your hand back behind you. Interlace the hand back around the left thigh. Your gaze is up toward the ceiling. The left foot is flat down on the floor. Take up three breaths. Exhale back on the table pose. We press back into downward dog. Downward dog, allow your head to just hang completely. 
Well, your belly in, bring some stability to the pose, but release your neck. Allow the neck to relax. And then we walk slowly to the front of the mat. And again, the legs are strong, slight bend in the knees, and then let your body relax. Let your neck release so that your body is flopping over like wet spaghetti over your legs. And it is entirely relaxed. And pull your belly in and begin to pull yourself all the way up. Strong legs, strong hips, strong arms come all the way up. And then exhale, hands come to your heart. Take a breath in. We're going to do a number of warrior poses and remembering that warrior poses um, are named so, such that the, the full name of warrior pose means warriors with great virtue. So we think of Martin Luther King even striking as, even when he was on strike, um, even when on protest was a warrior with great virtue. So doing the, the taking the poses with the idea in mind that you are a warrior with great virtue. Inhale, arms up overhead, hands to the ceiling. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Bending your knees as much as you need to, get your hands fully on the mat. Inhale, halfway up, hands to your shins, shoulder blades down your back, belly is strong. Exhale, hands down, right foot back, left foot back, coming into plank pose. Taking two breaths in plank pose, giving yourself enough time to fully engage your entire body, pulling your belly in, pulling your hips in, pulling your quads in. And then we will come down into chaturanga, either full chaturanga, or you can come down with your knees down, looking forward. Inhale, up to upward dog. Exhale, back to downward dog. In downward dog, we're going to take the right leg up behind us, bend the right knee, open the right knee all the way up to the ceiling. And then take the right knee into the belly, and then over to the left, Taking it around in a circle beneath us three times. And then take the leg back up and draw a circle on the ceiling so that you're drawing a circle with your knee as if a paintbrush were attached to your knee. And then take your right foot down, take the left leg up, bring it into your belly, take it around in a circle. Then take the leg up overhead, then bend the left knee and take it around in a circle. Bring the left knee down, then we will walk or hop to the front of our mats. Coming once more into the steep forward bend, allowing your body to, to um, relax. Simple bent knees, and then as we come up, coming up just on the inhale. So we're going to come up, inhale, and then pause, exhale, inhale, coming up, pause on the exhale, inhale one more time, coming up a little bit further, exhale, pause, and then inhale all the way up, and exhale, pause. And do this one more time. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling all the way down, a little bit more quickly. Inhale, halfway up this time. Hands to your shins, shoulder blades down your back, belly is strong. Hands back down. Take the right foot back, left foot back, full chaturanga, knees down. Coming all the way down, 
opening up, downward dog, press back to downward dog, take the right leg up. This time we're going to turn, we're going to take the right leg, the right knee up in the sky, and then bring it into the left um, elbow, take it over to the right elbow, and then into the chin, and then back up into the sky, opening it up. Take the right foot down, left leg up, then the left knee, take it around in a circle, and then take it in over to the right elbow, left elbow, into the chin, back up behind you, around in a circle, and then bring it down, walk or hop to the front of your mat, deep forward bend. This time we're gonna come up on the exhale. So inhale, and then exhale coming up, pause, inhale, and then move on your exhale, pause, inhale, exhale, move up, pause, inhale, one more time, exhale all the way up, arms come up, and we take our hands to our hands to our heart. Inhale, we're going to come down now into chair pose, coming into chair, arms strong out in front of us, thighs bent toward the floor, and then we're going to bring our bellies down onto our thighs, take our hands down to the mat, and then as much as you're able, lift your hips up to the floor, up to the ceiling, Inhale, halfway up, hands to your shins, shoulder blades down your back. Exhale, take the right foot back, left foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Take the right foot up behind you. Exhale, bring it forward. We're going to come up into crescent pose. Inhale, arms up. Keeping the belly strong, upright. Bringing the left hip forward as you draw the right hip back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back, clasp the hands behind you, draw them back. Open your chest up to the sky, keeping the ribs together. And then come forward, still in crescent. If you want extra support, you can bring your left knee down or you can keep your left leg up. But we're bringing the arms up overhead as much as is comfortable to you and leaning down toward the mat. One way to stabilize yourself is to engage your left quadricep and press your right foot firmly into the mat. And then release, inhale, arms up. Exhale, right hands come down to the mat, right foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, back to downward dog. Take your left leg up behind you. Inhale, bring it between your hands. Coming into crescent pose again. Inhale, your arms up. Exhale, back. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, all the way up. Pulling your ribs together. Exhale all the way back, interlacing your hands this time, lifting your heart up, and then bending forward. Three, count of three. Keep bending forward.
and then release your hands, bring them on either side of your left foot. Take your left foot back, chaturanga. Inhale up to upward dog. Exhale back to downward dog. Take three breaths in downward dog. Let your neck relax. Your gaze should be towards your belly button. Making your breath in and out. In and out. And then walk or hop to the front of your mat. Coming into chair pose. Exhale, release. Hands to the heart. We're going to do that one more time with some variations. Coming back into chair pose. Pulling the belly in. This time we're going to take the hands back. Open, take and clasp the hands back behind us. Opening the heart up. And then this time taking our belly down onto our thighs and opening the arms up way behind us. Inhale, coming up. Releasing the arms. Taking the hands down onto the mat. Right foot back, left foot back. Chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Right foot comes up behind you. Coming into crescent pose again. Strong left leg. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, back behind you. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Inhale, up. This time we're going to come down, taking our hands on either side of our right foot and bringing our shoulder down next to our right knee and then coming back and forth. You can bring your right knee down for extra support if you wish. You can come all the way down onto your forearms and keep your right, your left knee, excuse me, your left knee up or down, working to open up your right hip a little bit. And then coming up, taking the right hand, bringing it around so that it comes around your right thigh. And then we turn, we go lengthwise on our mat so that we're now seated with our left foot flat on the ground, our right leg long. There you go, very good. And then coming back, right foot planted, left leg long, arm comes back around the right leg. You can grasp it from behind if that's available to you, very nice. Good job. And then we turn to face the front of our mat. We bring the right knee down. We come halfway up. We're gonna lengthen the right leg and fold forward into a half Hanuman or monkey pose, pulsing over the right leg and bringing our, finally bringing our, our Belly as close to the thigh as it will come. Pausing here for three breaths. And then coming back up. Coming forward into crescent. And then once more back into monkey pose. then forward. This time we're going to come all the way up, coming into one legged standing forward bend. Right foot is down, left leg is up behind you. You can take one hand to your ankle and keep left, the other hand on the ground. If you have good balance, which I don't necessarily have, you can take both 
hands to the ankle. I'm not going to clean that tonight. And then we come up to where three pose from here, lifting our torso up, taking our arms out in front of us. And then bring our hands up and our foot down into Tadasana pose. A lot of balancing poses there. We have a lot of hip openers, release of emotion, some fierce warrior poses and some balance poses. We do it on the other side. Inhale, arms up. Excuse me. We're going to come into um, warrior, into um, chair. chair pose. Bring your belly down onto your thigh, belly down onto your thighs. Take your hands out behind you. Lift them all the way up. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands back behind you. Letting your neck go, your head go. And then release, hands come down on either side. Right foot back, left foot back. Holding in plank pose for three breaths. Pulling your belly in, your thighs in. Making sure your shoulders are directly over your wrists and your elbows. And then looking forward Coming down into Chaturanga. Inhale up into Upper Dog. Pressing back into Downward Dog. Take your left leg up behind you. Bring it forward between your hands. Coming into Crescent Pose. Inhale up and back. Right thigh is strong. Inhale up and back. Inhale up. And now we come down on the right side, bringing your knee down if you want for support, coming down onto your forearms if you wish, or keeping your knee up, and then pressing back and forth, opening up your hips. Take your left arm around, and then we're going to turn lengthwise on our mat. Bring the left foot down, the right foot long, and then coming over, right foot down, left foot long, and then back again, right foot long, left foot flat on the ground. We come to face the front of our mat, right knee comes down, come up, halfway up, straighten your left leg. We're going to come into half monkey pose or Hanuman, pull the belly and fold forward at your hips. Belly comes down onto your thighs. Pulsing here. Count of three. And then we come forward. Up into crescent. Exhale, press back into Hanuman. And then forward and back into Hanuman. And this time forward, coming into a standing one legged forward bend. Seeing how few supports you can use to hold yourself in a steady position. And then coming up into warrior three pose, arms behind you or to the side or in front of you. Bring your right foot down, coming to Tadasana. In Tadasana, we take our arms up overhead. Exhale, deep forward bend. Inhale, halfway up, hands to the shins, belly in, shoulder blades down the back. 
Exhale, hands to the floor. Right foot back, left foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, up. Exhale, back. Take the right foot up overhead. Exhale, take the right leg forward, the right ankle forward to come into pigeon pose. Lifting the chest up. And then pulling your belly in, lengthen your spine and draw your torso forward. Remember those first poses we did in child's pose, drawing yourself forward, feeling the opening in your right hip, seeing if you can lengthen out your left hip. Coming back up, we will turn to the right, coming into split angle, lifting the body up, forward fold, bringing your arms forward again, as you did in just now in pigeon. You want to bring your chest down to the floor and that's available to you. You can do that as well. Then we will take our gaze over to our right leg. Pull forward over the right leg. Come back up. Fold forward over the left leg. Come back up and now facing the back of your mat. Come into downward dog. Take your left leg up overhead. Bring your left knee up and forward. Coming into pigeon pose on the left hand side. Nice, big, strong pigeon. Chest is up, those same fingers touching the ground. Finger grip, lift you up. Long leg behind you, and then exhale, fold over your left shin, bring yourself down, and then breathing into the tightness, wherever it is, letting go any sense of frustration that you may have understanding, realizing that wherever you are in this pose is a good place to be. And allowing that to be where you are. Inhale, coming up. We'll come to a seated position, last pose. Coming into cow face pose. If you don't know cow face pose, you put right knee on top of left knee. Stick your feet out to the sides. It's supposed to look like a cow's face. I think these are the ears. And then we take, I forget how the, I think maybe these are the ears, I forget how the upper arm goes. So you can take your right hand up, fold it flat against your back, take your left hand, fold it flat against the back, and then inhale up, fold forward. You'll feel a nice hip opening here as you press your left thigh down. And then coming back up, release your hands, switch your legs. Now your left knee is on top. You're sticking these little 
ears out. Your feet, in other words. Your knees should be on top of each other if that's possible. If not, then make do what is comfortable for you. Take the other arm. My right shoulder is wonky, so it's not going to do that quite so well. So I can't grasp my hands behind me on this side. So I'm just going to put both hands behind me, hold on to my t-shirt. If you can't reach, you can hold on to your t-shirt, hold on to something. Inhale up, exhale, fold forward. Feeling the stretch in your hips. Inhale, coming back up. And then it'll come forward. Out of our movement prayer. To say our psalm of the day, which Tom and I will read responsibly by whole verse. And you may listen to in whatever capacity you wish. If you wish to say on your back to listen to it, if you wish to come back to a seated position, whatever feels most that you will most honor the Psalm. This is Psalm 139. Holy one, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O oh God, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it full well. We come now to our wisdom reading, which is from the gospel according to Matthew. Representative John Lewis spoke about getting into the right kind of trouble. King did much the same and during one stint in jail he wrote one of the most moving pieces of social justice literature in the past 100 years, the letter from the Birmingham jail. Here is a parable from Jesus in honor of Martin Luther King and the ideal that the ideals that he lived and died for. The King said, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. How do we both stand up against injustice and ground ourselves in peace and gentleness? King wrote, I believe unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word. And so one way to speak truth is to acknowledge the grief we feel rather than hide from it and act out in our grief. We grieve the violence of the people who masked and attack the Capitol. We may grieve the lives of those lost to COVID. We may grieve the injury against generations of black and brown people. And yet it is better to acknowledge this pain 
and offer it up to God and then to act it out, then to act out in, rather than to act out in violence. From that place of acknowledgement of pain and acknowledgement to God, to whatever divinity we seek, from there, we can act to make change in the world. And so with that, I ask you as we come to our prayers tonight, that we also come to a time to cleanse and heal our hearts. Let us be still before God. Let us rest quietly in his presence. Let us bring before God the words we have heard and the ones we have uttered that may have hurt and all those that were left unsaid. Let us bring before God the anger we have felt and the resentment we have fed. Let us be still before God and rest quietly in his presence. Our God is slow to anger, willing to forgive, full of grace, draw near to him, rest quietly in his presence and listen. Now we come to our prayers of intercession and I invite you to light a candle, to place it somewhere where others can see it. I have my candle here. Let us light a candle for those we remember tonight, as well as those in need of healing and hope. We pray for the strength of heart and mind to look beyond ourselves and address the needs of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. For the rural and urban poor, for the rebuilding of our communities, and for an end to the cycles of violence that threaten our future. We pray for all nations that they may live in unity, peace, and concord, and that all people may know justice and enjoy the perfect freedom that only God can give. We pray for the medical professionals and healthcare workers around the world. We pray for those striving to build a better world and those working to make the world safer, more equitable, and just for all people. Now I invite you to unmute yourselves. As I say, we pray for healing for all those whose names we offer now silently or aloud. Now I invite you to give forth the names of those people in need of healing, those people who have died those people, those institutions that are on your heart. Enslaved ancestors. My aunt Brooke. Deirdre. Jim and, Jim and Clem, Sarah and Chuck, Emily and William. Daryl and McPherson. Danny. Finley. Heather. Penny. People of Washington, D.C. Thank you. 
Glory to God from whom all love flows. Glory to Jesus who showed his love through suffering. And glory to the Holy Spirit who brings light to the darkest places. Amen. Amen. And now we come to our poem of the week, Martin Luther King Jr. by Gwendolyn Brooks. A man went forth with gifts. He was a prose poem. He was a tragic grace. He was a warm music. He tried to heal the vivid volcanoes. His ashes are reading the world. His dream still wishes to anoint the barricades of faith and control. His world still burns with the, the center of the sun above the thousands and the hundred thousands. The word was justice. It was spoken. So it shall be spoken. So it shall be done. And I will read the poem again. And I invite you to allow whatever movement the words call forth in your body to be expressed by you so that you may move your arms, you may stand up and move around the room, whatever seems to be drawn forth by the poet Gwendolyn Brooks or the man, Martin Luther King. A man went forth with gifts. He was a prose poem. He was a tragic grace. He was a warm music. He tried to heal the vivid volcanoes. His ashes are reading the world. His dream still wishes to anoint the barricades of faith and of control. His word still burns the center of the sun above the thousands and the hundreds, hundred thousands. The word was justice. It was spoken. So it shall be spoken, so it shall be done. And we'll continue that movement in a seated position on our maps. Coming into Dadasana pose, Dandasana pose. Strong belly. Lifting your core, lifting your torso, drawing your rib cage together, bring your shoulder blades down your back. Inhale, draw your toes towards your shins and exhale, pull forward, taking your hands to your shins, your ankles, wherever they reach to, and draping yourself forward over your thighs. If you need to bend your knees, that's fine. Whatever is comfortable in your body, allowing your body to feel a stretch. And inhale, come up. Take your hands back behind you. Bend your left knee and your right knee. We're going to take a reverse table. Lift your hips all the way up. Pull your belly in. And then come down, extend your left leg long, take your right foot to the far side of your left thigh, inhale, left arm up, exhale, left arm to the far side of your left thigh, left thigh, right thigh, excuse me, right thigh, turn and look over your right shoulder, inhale, strong spine, Exhale, deeper twist. Inhale, extend your spine. Exhale, twist more deeply. Come back, take your right foot forward and your left knee, put your left foot to the far side of your right thigh. Left hand comes down, belly is in, right arm up. Bend the right elbow. Inhale up. 
Exhale, we'll come over to your left shoulder. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, deepen your twist. And then release. Come bring your feet together. Take your hands into your feet as if you're opening up a book. Pull your belly in. And then we're going to lean forward. You're going to take your head as if you're going to try and hit the floor, the mat beyond your toes. So inhale up and press forward. You'll feel a stretch here in your hips, in your quadriceps. Then inhale, come up. And now we're going to round pulling the belly in, round and bring your head down toward your feet, touching your feet if that'll work for you, pressing your elbows into your shins, inhale, come up, and then we will come back for our closing meditation, alternate nostril breathing. If you're new to alternate nostril breathing, we're going to take the right thumb and use it to open and close the right nostril and use the right pointer finger or right little finger and use it to open and close the left nostril. So we begin by inhaling through the left nostril Close the left, exhale through the right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left. Exhale right. Inhale right. Exhale left. Inhale left, exhale right, inhale right, and exhale left. Close your eyes, take your hands down onto your thighs, feel the weight of your hands resting on your thighs. And then recall your intention to yourself and say it to yourself, I am who you are tonight. Your intention for who you are this coming week. Repeat it to yourself. Breathe it in. See if you have more space an hour later than you had at the beginning, more space to hold that intention. Now you may roll down onto your back, onto the floor. Coming into happy baby. Coming into happy baby, rolling back and forth. And then straighten your legs out along the mat so your legs are straight. And then on an exhale, bring your right knee up to your chest. Pull it in. And on the next exhale, take the right leg across your body for a twist. And I got it. 
and then coming, taking the right leg back, stretching both legs up, out. On the next exhale, bring your left knee up. Bring it all the way up to your chest. Inhale and exhale, take the left knee across your body for a twist. Feeling the release, the opening in your hip. And then come back onto your back, both legs long, stretching them out. as we come to our closing prayer. Holy one, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark, but our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. And now Tom will read the poem again. And as you hear the poem, wait to hear a word that speaks to you. And then when the poem finishes, call out your word loudly enough so everyone else can hear it. A man went forth with gifts. He was a prose poem. He was a tragic grace. He was a warm music. He tried to heal with vivid volcanoes. His ashes are reading the world. His dream still wishes to anoint the barricades of faith and of control. His word still burns the center of the sun above the thousands and the hundred thousands. The word was justice. It was spoken. So it shall be spoken. So it shall be done. Warm. Open. Heal. Sweet. These are the words of our prayer together. Now I invite you to come into Shavasana for two minutes. Letting your body relax entirely, letting your breath go, simply be. <sighs>
Take a deep breath in and let it go. Begin to wiggle your fingers, stretch out your arms, wiggle your toes, stretch out your legs. Roll over onto your right hand side, come up to a seated position. Deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing air to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the watching shepherds to you, deep peace of the sun of peace to you. Amen and namaste. Thank you everybody. Thank you for being here tonight. Be sure to go check out the website that has the poems and there's a little comment section where you can send me questions or comments, things you'd like more of, things you want to let me know. Uh, check it all out on the link here. Thank you, Paige. Um, and I hope to see you next week back at St. Thomas Church. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mother Diana. Have a good Thank you. weekend. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Good night.